At the time I decided that nothing would be done on cable, nothing would be done until we found out about Randy Hansen, and then we received a letter this year, we received a letter this year in June for the lawyer, for the woman who appeared last season on ESPN by the name of Klutz, K-L-U-T-Z. He included with his letter a copy of a lawsuit he was preparing on her behalf against Tom Cable and the Raiders. The allegations included the matters discussed in ESPN and other serious and related matters. That lawsuit created a tremendous amount of work, stress, and turmoil. Tom had been told early in his career that he could have been fired without pay for the wrath he brought on the Raider organization for supposedly accepting the treatment of women. The allegations that were made on the ESPN show, that is public, not new in any way, and invites several women. He did not he did not uh, fight the allegation that he hit his first wife. His second wife said he was physically and verbally abusive to, the, to her under penalty of perjury. And Mrs. Lutz, who was getting ready to file this complaint against the Raiders again, that he, when he hit her while he was the head coach, Now, in the contract for the head coach specifically states that his actions are subject to the discretion of the general partner of the Raiders, and the general partner has the right to do all things necessary to guide what that coach is doing. Number two. The National Football League, part of the Constitution, says that the head coach has to keep the owner informed of any matters that would be of prejudice uh, to the team, uh, informed in a timely basis relative to past transgressions. I asked Tom Cable at least three or four different times, is there anything else that we have to deal with relative to the accusations made against you. I was never told about the three women. I knew about it from the ESPN show, but I never knew about what Miss Lutz put in her complaint this time, and they were going to sue the Raiders too. Randy Hansen is suing the Raiders. Miss Lutz was suing the Raiders. And it got to a point where our attorneys were spending a lot of time on uh, these allegations uh, against us. Now, uh, one of the things revealed by Miss Lutz was too much for me, and that was whether, I don't know if it's true, I, we're going to find out, but uh, Tom was asked about it and refused to answer it. He brought her on trips on the road when the team was playing on the road. He's the head coach. And this is the guy who's talking about focus. We got a job to do. We got a game to play. We got to win. And there, 
flying in friends. So that they can be with them the night before the game. All this stuff goes a long way against my wishes, against my way of living, against my life, and uh, against the rate of way. And I just, uh, just wasn't going to take it anymore. And uh, so, our attorneys asked them to resolve all the cases against us the Raiders, and until you do that, we're going to take money out of your check because we don't know what the final verdict will be against the Raiders in the lawsuit. And so that's why we took the 20000 and we didn't do it till about uh, uh, six checks left. Some very strong words from the Raiders owner, Al Davis, now our Legal analyst Steve Moskowitz joins us. Steve, thank you so much for joining us. Pleasure. And you know, Al Davis held $120,000 from Cable's uh, check over the final six weeks. Big question is, should he be concerned that he could be sued for Tom Cable's actions? Absolutely. Here you have basic employment law. And an employer can be sued for some of the actions of an employee, but not other actions. He said, well, okay, well, Steve, where's the dividing line? And that's the big question. It's a matter of fact. It's a matter of allegations. It's a matter of what was condoned, what was known, what was done. And then you can even get down to the point where who's deciding it? Do we have a judge? Do we have a, a jury here? We have an arbitrator. Will that be final? Will they go on? The, the bottom line is absolutely, and once again, you're going to see backroom deals and settlements if that's at all possible. But yes, he definitely has something to worry about. On the other hand, Al's trying to say, okay, look, I had nothing to do with this. I didn't, boy, if I had known this, I would have thrown him off right away and let me out of this, Judge. I guess the, the other question is then when Mrs. Lutz's attorney contacted the Raiders, what could they have possibly had in that letter when they were threatening the pseudo Raiders? Once again, you can threaten anybody with anything that you want, but what's happened here is here she has a more difficult case because she has to prove that this has something to do with the Raiders. It would have been easier if it was a party, it was given by the Raiders, possibly they gave them too much alcohol, but you don't have that here. On the other hand, there's the allegation she was traveling with the team, what was known. The big struggle here is can she tie the team to it? Anybody can accuse anybody of anything, but can she tie the team to it? That's what her attorney is going to try to do. The Raiders attorney is going to say, look, it had nothing to do with it. Judge, let me out of this. Is there anything to the, to the dollar amount? Um, are, they, are, um, the, are the Raiders limited by the amount of money that they could dock from Tom Cable's check? Is it for their legal fees? Is it for, for a potential judgment? Could, it, could they have docked more? Could they, are, I mean, how did they come up with this figure in your, in your estimation? I think they try to come up with some type of estimate, but the problem is the basic, are they entitled to do that? Because here you have a more difficult area for the Raiders. Here you have somebody who basically arbitrarily says, you know, I think you're going to cost me X number of dollars, maybe 120000 is the right amount, so I'm going to take 20000 a paycheck. That's very arbitrary, and when an employer just starts taking away money, from an employee arbitrarily, you can have some real problems with the labor law. That is going to be the first hurdle. And then even if Coach Cable did cause a problem for the Raiders, that doesn't necessarily mean that he has to reimburse the team for it. So you got some, so you got some real more difficult issues here. Well, and one of the things Al Davis continued to discuss is the character he demands when people are suited up in the silver and black and why he thought Tom Cable was violating that and contradicting what he demands. If you're preaching to them about living right and doing this right, we got to get together, we got to do this, and then you're out there in squabbles, that's not the that's not the real reason. Can actually get a week before it comes out. The real world. What would you say to another team if they called you about cable? What would I say to them? Yeah, if they were interested in hiring him. Jerry? Yes, sir. Jerry Freitas? Yes, sir. Uh, okay, you asked your last question. <laughs> you regret now that you didn't fire him, sir? Well, I really, I, w I was held, held because Randy, they broke his jaw. Now, how he broke his jaw, I don't know. But I was held because the ramifications could be great if I were to fire him. 
That would have given people the thinking that I felt that he didn't break his jaw. And I didn't want to get in the middle of it. I thought the Raiders should stay out of it. And they kept us out of it until we got discredited publicly. We don't do anything about it. Uh, dysfunctional, wild fights between coaches. I mean, Christ, it's hard to believe. Every day it was something else. Now, given the hype of today's event and leading up to it, I had a chance during that candid conversation to ask Mr. Davis what he thought about today and what his anticipation coming into it was. And he said he was excited. He said he was following the news and the tweets out there just as much as everyone else. And after today's event, he said he was very happy to experience all of this with the Raider Nation. And now for more on the epic press conference, we go back to the studio where Henry Wilford and Ray Ratto are standing by. When I uh, decided sometime in June, I think it was June or May of this year, that uh, we no longer, as an organization, can fight the battle of personal problems for certain players. We tried it in the past. We had been successful with some of the greatest players who've ever played professional football. And we failed with some of the greatest players who have ever played professional football who had personal problems. And uh, we had a big investment in this guy. Basically, he's a good person, but he's got personal problems. And I decided it's time that we weren't going to fight it anymore. I wasn't going to. I wasn't going to ask the coaching staff to do it. And I had already traded for uh, Jason and uh, had that in the back of my mind. And uh, we had uh, Gradkowski, who was coming off an injury, who showed some, some ability to be a quarterback in this league. And uh, that was the thing with Jamarcus. It hurt us a great deal. But you got to go on. You got to overcome those things. And we almost did this year. Al Davis once again commenting on Jamarcus Russell. And Ray, I want to update our viewers out there that I reached out to Jamarcus Russell tonight. I also talked with his uncle, Dr. Albert Russell. Dr. Albert Russell made the comments for uh, Jamarcus tonight, and he said, number one, Al Davis is just trying to cover this whole thing up. He said Jamarcus dealt with two deaths over a three-month period, and he said the Oakland Raiders were absolutely no help at all with Jamarcus. Once again, he reiterated that his nephew, Jamarcus Russell, will be back in the NFL. When you heard Mr. Davis commenting on Jamarcus Russell, give us your take on that. A guy who's headed for a huge payday, Namdi Asamoa. Here's what the Raiders owner had to say regarding. Before the season started last year, all the talk was that Namdi wanted to be traded, wanted to go to New York. I think you all remember it. Some of you wrote it. I called him because I could have made a move. And I asked him, do you want to go or don't you want to go? Make up your mind, because I've got to make up my mind. We were uh, very much uh, uh, had time, time restraints and all. He said, no, I want to stay. I don't want to go. And I think he said that. Then just the other day, you get another signal. I try not to get tied up in that. If, if we get to the point where we know what the rules are on the collective bargaining agreement, we know what's being done, and uh, we take a look at the Raiders, and see what we want to do uh, and see what he wants to do. We'll work on it. But uh, he's a great player, and uh, he does a good job in the community. And so you always like to have that. But can that $17 million bring you two or three quality players to help you win? Well, this is our last time speaking for the day. So, Ray, I, I want you to sum up this entire press conference today and your take on Al Davis. The guy's 81 years old. A lot of people make him out to be not on top of his game. But to me, he seemed extremely alert, still very, very much um, aware of what's going on on and off the field with his franchise. 